Hey there, it's great to have you back at Learn As You Explore for the final part of the Line Follower project. In the last video, we learned how to define the detection logic and the reaction logic for our Line Follower block program. In this video, we will take the final table from our previous tutorial containing both the detection and reaction logic, and we will use that to develop our block program and then upload it and test it on the robot. We will see our line follower program in action on our Mbot 2. Before we dive in, here's a quick way to support my work. If you're planning to get an Mbot 2, you can use my Amazon affiliate link in the description. It won't cost you extra, but as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Or if you just want to say thanks, there's a buy me a coffee link down in the description too. All right, let's jump in. Let's go to the mBlock web editor by going to ide.mblock.cc. First, let's give a name for our project so we can save it. I'm going to call this the line follower because that's what we're going to be implementing. So we've successfully renamed our project. We'll now add our mBot2 robot. Click on add, then select the mBot2 robot, and then click on OK. As always, we will add an event so we can control when the program starts. We'll go to the events category and use the when button A pressed block, and we'll change this to button B to start the program. To be able to stop the program, as in our previous videos, we'll use the repeat until block under the control category. Let's drag this and put it right below our when button B pressed block. For the condition within the repeat until, we will use the when button A pressed block from the sensing category. So we use the button A pressed, drag that onto the repeat until block condition. Now let's define the actions that we want to repeat as long as the program is active. We are now going to define the core logic of our program. And for that, we will refer to the detection and reaction logic table from our previous tutorial. If you're wondering how we got this table, I've explained this in my previous tutorial. I'll add a link to that video in the description if you want to check that out. Now in the reaction logic column, I want to refine one piece here. Instead of turn left and turn right, I'm going to change this to arc left and arc right respectively. Why is that important, you ask? Well, let's visualize this. So let's take turn left as an example. Say the robot was slightly to the right of the line, as shown here, and we command it to turn left. It is going to rotate in place to the left, as shown here. As it rotates in place, it does not make forward progress, which means that the robot would have a more jerky motion as it switches from driving straight along the line to turning left or right. Now let's check how the arc left command would look like. Once again, the robot is slightly to the right of the line. When we command it to arc left, the robot continues driving forward, but arcing to the left as it goes forward. As you can see, this motion is a lot smoother than the turn left motion. It is also more natural if you compare it to driving a car. When you want to turn right or left in a car, you don't come to a complete stop and rotate the car in place. Instead, you continue moving forward while making the turn, hence resulting in an arc motion. So we'll use the arc left and arc right as our refined reactions. Let's take this final table to our mBlock editor and continue building our program. Great. Now that we have our detection and reaction logic, we will first focus on the detection logic so that we have the full structure of our program and later move on to implementing the reaction logic. The first detection case is if the decimal value from the quad RGB sensor is zero. Let's use the if then else block from the control category. Let's drag this to within our repeat until block. For the condition within the if block, we'll go to the quad RGB sensor category and use the third block here. This block gives us the decimal value of the quad RGB sensor from 0 to 15 and checks if the decimal value is a value that we desire. Drag this to set it as the condition within the if block. We want to check that the decimal value read from the quad RGB sensor is 0. 
So make sure that the status here is set to zero. This is our first detection logic. Let's move on to the next one. Let's bring in an other if then else block and drop it into the else of the previous if then else block. The second detection logic is to check that the sensor value is less than four. If we go to the quad RGB sensor category, we don't have a block that directly does this comparison for us. So we will have to build it ourselves based on this status block. So let's drag that onto our workspace. Since we want to check that this value is less than four, we need a less than operator block. So let's head to the operators category and drag in the less than block as shown here. Now the first operand of this block is the sensor value. And the second operand is simply four because we want to check that the sensor value is less than four. This forms the final condition that we want to use within the second if then else block. So let's insert it there. Lovely, we now have two of the detection cases done. Moving on to the third case, we want to check if the sensor value mod four is equal to zero. If you want to try this out, please pause the video and take some time to see if you can get this. Before you pause, please note that if you're looking for the mod operator, it can be found in the operators category. If you scroll a bit, you should see it right here. You now have all the knowledge needed to build this. Pause now if you want to try building the third detection logic yourself. All right, I hope you gave it a try and great job if you got it. If not, no worries, just follow along with me. Let's grab another if then else block from the control category and insert it into the else part of the previous block. First, we want to get the sensor value. So we take the block from the quad RGB sensor category that gives us the status between zero and 15. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to get some space to work with and get this block all the way to the bottom. We then want to perform the mod four operation for that, as we saw before, we would go to the operators block, drag the mod operator block to our workspace. The first operand is going to be the sensor value. So let's get that set here. The second operand is going to be four because we want to perform the sensor value mod four. Now we need to check that the sensor value mod four results in zero. So let's go back to our operators block and we have an equals operator. So here we can check that this entire value here equals to zero. This is our final condition. So let's drag this into our if block. The fourth and final detection logic is already done because it is simply all other values that haven't been detected so far, which automatically falls in the else part of our final if then else block. Amazing work. We have the detection logic fully completed now. Let's start working on the reaction logic. From our table, we see that we have three distinct reactions, arc left, arc right, and drive forward. If you look into the MBOT2 chassis category, you will notice that there is no ready-made block called arc left or arc right. So we will have to define these blocks ourselves. This is something new that we have not done before. Whenever you have a piece of code that you're going to repeat within a program, you can define that to be a separate block, name it to your liking, and use your very own newly defined block in the program. If that was a little confusing, it will make a lot more sense as we work through it in the next few minutes. Let's go to the My Blocks category and click Make a Block. We will replace the block name with Arc Left and click on OK. You will now see a define arc left block automatically show up in your workspace. Within this block, we can define the commands that should get executed when the arc left block is used. In order for the robot to arc left, both wheels must be moving forward, but the left wheel must drive slower than the right wheel. We'll move the define arc left block to the right. So let's go to the MBOT2 chassis to find a block where we can command the speeds of both the wheels independently. 
This block, which says encoder motor 1 rotates at some RPM and encoder motor 2 rotates at a different RPM, seems perfect for our task. So let's drag that onto our define arc left block. Within this block, we can specify the speeds of the left and the right motors independently. Encoder motor 1 here refers to the left wheel, and encoder motor 2, EM2, refers to the right wheel. An important point to note here is that for the left wheel to move forward, its RPM should be positive, while for the right wheel to move forward, its RPM should be negative. From my testing, I've found that setting the left RPM to 10 and the right RPM to negative 50 works best. But feel free to tune this to your preference. Now let's repeat this for the arc right block. We'll go to the my blocks category, make a block and name it arc right and click on OK. We have a define arc right block that shows up automatically on our workspace. We go to the mbot2 chassis category and we select this particular block and bring it on to the define arc right. Since we want to arc right, we need the left motor to go faster than the right motor. We also want both motors to move forward, which means the RPM for the left motor should be positive, while that for the right motor should be negative. So we'll set the left RPM to 50 and the right RPM to negative 10. Great, we've now defined the arc left and arc right reactions. The remaining reaction is to drive forward for this, we have a ready-made block available in the mbot2 chassis category, so we don't need to define our own block for that. Now that we have everything defined, let's add the reactions to our block program. From our reaction logic table, we see that we want to arc left for the case when the sensor value is reported to be zero. So go to the my blocks category, and you have an arc left block that we can now drag in and use within our first detection case. For the next case where the sensor value is less than four, we want to arc right. So let's drag in the arc right block to that particular case. Moving on, the next case is when the sensor value mod four equals zero. And in this case, the reaction is to arc left. So we'll go back to the my blocks category and get the arc left block and drag that into this particular case. Finally, if the sensor value does not fit into any of the previous conditions, we simply want to drive forward. Go to the mbot2 chassis category and drag the moves forward at 50 RPM block into the else part of the logic. I find 50 RPM to be too fast, so I'll change this to 30 RPM. Awesome, you've fully implemented both the detection and reaction logic as we've defined them. There are a couple more finishing touches that will make the program better. First, as in our previous programs, We'll add a stop encoder motor all block at the very end of the program. To do this, go to the mbot chassis category and scroll all the way down. You should see the stop encoder motor all block and bring that and attach it to the very end after the repeat until block. This is to ensure that when we press button A to quit the program, we get out of the repeat until block and then we make sure that all the motors are stopped before we end the program. Secondly, if we're testing detection of a black line on a white piece of paper, then the line detection works best when the fill light is set to the blue color. The fill light is basically just the LEDs that the quad RGB sensor has. It helps the quad RGB sensor sense the line regardless of lighting conditions. Setting it to blue works best to detect a black line on a white piece of paper like the one provided with your mbot 2 robot. Go to the quad RGB sensor category and use the quad RGB sensor set fill light color of line following block and insert it right after the when button B pressed block. Make sure to change the color from green to blue for best performance of detecting black lines on a white piece of paper. Make sure that the robot is powered on and is connected to your computer with the USB cable. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll add a link in the description to the exact timestamp from one of my previous videos where I show you how to do that. Once your robot is powered on and connected to your computer using the USB cable, click on Upload and then click on Serial. Select the USB serial device and click Connect. Great, your robot is now connected. 
click on upload code, wait for the upload to complete, and great, your code has now been uploaded. You can now unplug the USB cable from the robot. Great, let's head on over to the robot and see our program in action. For the setup, I've used the line follower sheet that comes with the MBOT2. As always, I'll have the program on the side and point to the section of the program being executed to give you a better visual understanding of the program. Let's place the robot on the line and start the program by pressing the triangular B button. We see that the robot follows the line well, adjusting as needed to stay on track. Next, we'll place the robot off the line and start the program. So we will place the robot to the right of the line and then press button B to start. We see it turn left, find the line, and then start tracking the line, adjusting its path as needed to continue following the line. I'll let the robot continue following the line for a bit while you observe the code path that's being taken on the right. We can stop the robot now by pressing the A button. Congratulations! If you came all the way and worked through this project right from understanding the sensor's values, then defining the detection and reaction logic, and now finally implementing the program and testing it out on the robot, you have done really amazing work. I hope you also had a lot of fun along the way. Don't forget to share your work with your family and friends. Show them what your MBOT2 robot can do now. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming and I'll see you in the next one.